Hi there, Danny here from GDL Automotive. Uh, this is a rather lengthy video. It's a how-to guide for how to do the coolant hose in the valley of the three liter diesel Jeep. It's a very common fault. Um, you'll, if you follow this video step by step, uh, you'll be able to do it yourself. Uh, there are some sections of it where the audio is not great and we've had to put some subtitles over it. Um, so yeah, this is how you do it. That's for schoolgirls. Now here's a route with some chest hair. Hi there, Danny here from GDL Automotive. Uh, today we're shooting you the how-to video for how to change the coolant hose that leaks in the valley of the 3 litre diesel Jeep Grand Cherokee engine. So before you get to the stage that I'm at, you need to remove the wiper cowling, which I've already done. Uh, you basically just take your wiper arms off, your windscreen wiper motor and linkages, uh, the rubber cowling and there's four 10 mils, one down here behind the turbo, one here on the side and then the same on the other side. Two 10 mils on this little uh, aluminium heat shield and then that whole wiper cowling comes out, gives you a lot more space. Uh, the next step is you want to take off your air intake, take off your top intercooler hose over there, take off the bottom intercooler hose here, uh, undo this intercooler hose. Uh, and it's much easier if you remove the coolant header tank. So we're going to go ahead and do that and then we'll come back and I'll show you the next step. Bottom into cool hose, heaps of fun, two flat blade screwdrivers. There you go, that was the easiest one I've ever had.
All right, now we've got all that nonsense off. Uh, next thing you need to take off is this plate on the front of the high pressure pump. Uh, it's just four 10 mils, they're quite long, a couple of inches. That pipe is covered in the white sock. So take those two off next. Oh, this has had a high pressure pump change at some point. Interesting. So the next thing you want to undo is a little 10 mil nut here where my pinky is. There's an 8 mil here behind this little wiring wire piece. And just here is the little pyramid nipple thing for the uh, engine cover. That's a 13 mil. Uh, take all three of those out. Then you want to take these two hard lines off. You've got to be really careful with these. They're plastic. These are the thing that will break if you're not gentle. So you unclip these. You've got to push on either side and pull up. And then... You've got to swing them over the other side of the engine without breaking them. And there's a clip here that they click into. If you can get it out of that without breaking it. There we go. And then just this one to this fuel rail. Same thing, pinch the two sides if you can. And there you go. All right, so they're off. Um, and you just need them out of the way. You don't need them totally off the car. You just gotta, without breaking them, manhandle them. Out of the way. So you don't wanna turn the ignition on once, now that we've got the fuel system open. Uh, so you take all of these off uh, and be sure not to bend them as you're feeding them out because you're gonna have a horrible time putting them back in. While you're there, you can unclick all your injectors because you need to pull the wiring loom out of the way as well. So, there we go. So these, this end is 17 millimeters, at the fuel rail end is a 19 millimeter. bit of wiring harness for the fuel rail pressure sensor. It's got this dopey plastic safety thing that someone's going to accidentally unclip that. Okay. There's two fuel lines here on the high pressure pump. One on the underside here and one over here. Uh, you need to take them off as well. Same thing, just 19 millimetres.
under your injector harnesses on this side. Just gives you a bit more space to work with. Uh, pull your fuel lines out. Now you're left with the, the longer hard lines that are running from the pump and crossing them over. You've got to take them off as well. So you've got three 10 mils, uh, sorry, two 10 mils and an eight mil. There's one back here is an eight mil, just here. Undo that. Uh, a 10 mil here on the front of the valve cover and then a 10 mil here on the top of the throttle body. So pull the th three of them off and then you'll be able to get the hard lines off. This main diesel line to the fuel rail you can leave by just tucking over to the side here. Uh, however, this vacuum line here, there's a little solenoid here that runs over to the back of the EGR. Uh, you need to pull that vacuum line off. This solenoid needs to come out, so it's easiest. It's one of those little brittle plastic things that you never plan on breaking, but break all the time. Oh, there we go. Keep my words, it didn't break. Great success. Um, so yeah, just pull that vacuum hose out of the way as well. And then you've got this solenoid, a couple of little seven mils. The only seven mils you need for the whole job are just for this little solenoid. A couple of little seven mil nut, uh, bolts rather. Thing. You do not want to break this. This is expensive. Uh, next, you want wiring harness or loom, whatever you want to call it. You take it off from this side, that, this side being the passenger side, uh, and you flick it over, and it just sits up out of the way over on the driver's side. So you don't need to disconnect everything on the driver's side, uh, but you do need to undo everything over here on the passenger side to allow the harness to flick over. So we'll get underway with that. Ta -da. Uh, so I need the little the tool right in there. Oh, so that's a... oh and there's the air compressor. So this this hard bit of plastic here, you just pull on it a bit. They're just sitting on the the bolts for the valve cover. So just gently uh, feed this. And the problem, next problem is glow plugs. So your glow plugs are these, but they're easiest to grab with a pair of long nose pliers. Uh, see if it'll come now. Uh, probably not. Uh, no. uh, now you want to take this flexi hose off that's the intake hose for the turbo. There's a big hose clamp, usually the clamp is right on the back there, it's not much fun. Uh, I think from memory it's an eight millimeter. If you can get a small quarter drive ratchet on that, uh, that'll help you get that off. Then you can get to, there's a little plug down here on the back of the turbo, you can't see it, way down deep in there. And then there's this one here, something on the floor, uh, just for the turbo control module thingy. It's a technical term. Alright, so you need to unplug this, there's a top and a bottom, and a jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. And this one here on the side of the turbo has another one of these yellow clips on it. Although, everything off on this side except uh, the glow plugs and this silicone, which I'm about to pop off. There we 
good. I'm going to try and leave that connected because I don't think I have to take it off. I think it's got enough length. We'll find out. Um, so now we need <coughs> long nose pliers. Mm, these are tight. I'm supposed to just pull on them. There we go. That's all it is. Pull up, not sideways. Don't let things go down the turbo. It's a bad idea. That one was easy. All right. So that's everything except for this throttle body plug. Which last time I did this, I had to take the throttle body off first, which does have to come off anyway. But we should be able to pop this off. There we go. Pop that in. This side is off. So now. Take your glow plugs out of the other side. So your glow plug harness, not the glow plug itself. Is about as much space as you'll need as far as wiring is concerned. Doesn't look fantastic, but trust me, you don't want to spend another day taking the rest of the harness off. So that's out of the way. This is out of the way. Next step is throttle body's got to come off. Um, and this turbo inlet, there's two 5mm Allen keys um, down here deep down in the valley of the shadow of death. Why they use Allen keys is totally beyond me. Um, yeah, all right, let's do that next. never ever comes out easily. This bracket comes off first, gives you a bit more space. It's easier to undo that plug. Um. Okay. You've got to unplug this sensor on the bottom of the throttle body while the throttle body is down in there. Uh, when you get to that job, it'll make sense. But once it's unplugged, it comes out. When you stick your little 5mm Allen key in this turbo intake, there's two of them, not in the turbo intake, on the Allen key bolts, just give them a tap with a hammer. Make sure you're in there properly, because if you round them, your day is over.
I'd stick my doohickey. Don't drop anything down there either. The most challenging part of this, apart from the throttle body, which we've now lost our temper at, is these silly little Torx bolts that hold the two fuel rails in on either side. Um, you, if you can get a small Torx bit in there, it will come undone, but you tend not to have the space. So the trick here is you need a chisel and a hammer or a screwdriver with a metal shank the whole way through it, which is how we do it and then remove these and replace them with normal hex head bolts for the next sorry git that has to do the job. Um, I'll show you how to do it, but you've got to be super careful that you don't miss and slip with your chisel. You'll sink a hole through your plastic inlet manifold and then your weekend's over as well. So there's one. Once you crack it, you can just undo it by hand. Man, the back of my knees are burning. All right, I've left that rail plugged in, so just tuck that out of the way. Lovely. Now you've got I think it's 10, 8 mils all the way around and your manifold come, well the top half of this manifold comes up. manifold off. Is that hose leaking after all of that? Factory Jeep hose clamps. The evidence looks like this hose is busted right on the top. We'll find out in a minute. There's something definitely leaking because the valley is full. Uh, now someone on the forum asked me about this o-ring in here and it looks like the 10 mil goes on the back there which means to get to that turbo has to come off. Bad news for that friend. The problem is, it's not the actual clamps that give trouble. It's the fucking hose, it goes brittle. It shits itself. It's a technical term. It's the price you pay for Jeep work. Mm. 
this is not the green this is the worm oh they're gonna be too small don't drop the copper washer Got it back, it's on my finger. you're at this stage basically you put it all back together in the reverse order of how I've pulled it apart uh, once you're all back together make sure your fuel lines are tight turn the ignition on and let it sit for about five minutes before you try to start it this should bleed all the uh, diesel fuel uh, through the fuel line so you don't get an airlock 